Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here. We're in our Palo Alto studio for a CUBE conversation, getting deeper into virtualization and containers. And as we get ready for DockerCon that's coming just around the corner, it's fourth year. Uh, there's a lot of exciting things going on. And one of the exciting things is a new company that'll be launching there called AppLariat. We're excited to be joined by AppLariat CEO, Mazda Marvasti and former VMware CTO and AppLariat advisor, Ben Fati. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So Ben, what, uh, why did you join these guys? What are you helping them with? What opportunity? <laughs> You've been in the business a long, long time. Yes, I have. Aren't all these problems solved yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, we create new ones. Oh, we create new ones, okay. <laughs> Solve a few, create a few more. <laughs> Job security. So Mazda and I worked together at VMware for several years, and uh, I initially managed the vSphere um, operating system and hypervisor, and Mazda ma was the CTO of the management business unit, so he was responsible for the vision of how we're going to manage all these virtual machines that people are creating and the applications running on top of them. And then later on, I became the CTO of the company and continued to work with Mazda. And one of the things that happened uh, over the last year or so that uh, we were at uh, VMware together was the rise of containers and right. Docker and cloud native applications. And um, we actually worked together at VMware trying to integrate containers and Docker directly into vSphere to enable cloud native applications to run on vSphere environments. Um, anyway, make a long story short, so we both left and uh, I became an advisor to several startups and Mazda started this company. So um, after about a year or so he came back and we had conversations about what he was trying to do. And meanwhile I'd gone off to a startup where I personally delivered uh, software as a service using cloud native applications. So I built the operating system and uh, was also trying to deliver applications uh, in the cloud native format. Um, so I felt the pain of uh, what Mazda was trying to solve. And when he explained his approach of what he was trying to build, uh, it, it was really, it resonated with me in that um, he was seeing uh, the IT organizations and developers in existing enterprises struggling with this move to cloud native 12-factor uh, applications and moving to the cloud. So the environment they've built uh, really makes it easy to containerize applications and move them to the cloud. And by doing so, they make them more portable. So you have the ability to go back and forth and uh, get all the uh, advantages that you would of a containerized uh, modern cloud native application. So that resonated with me and I felt I could add some value and obviously he felt uh, I could right, add some right. value. And um, after all, it's not often you get a chance to work with somebody who's named after a car company. So. <laughs> that was that's a big true. factor. <laughs> Is he autonomous? That's what I want to know. <laughs> We're working on that. We're working on that. But it, you know, it begs a question, obviously a lot of activity around Docker and, and, and a lot of buzz around Docker and DockerCon and Kubernetes and, and this move around containerization. You know, what was the big challenge that still has yet to be solved that you guys are addressing? So from, from my perspective, the big challenge is how do you deploy these things at scale to existing applications, right? If you're developing a brand new application, right, you can just go hire yourself a, you know, a software artiste to <laughs> handcraft one of these beautiful works of art that you can then deploy. And if that guy leaves, good luck, right? Right, right. Uh, which again, is all over the place, right? If you go look at you know, kind of the uh, a graveyard of applications sitting at the enterprises, right? So how do you take that environment and bring it into the modern environment of running it as cloud native? So that was a technological challenge for us. Now, when, you know, when Ben and I were talking while we were at VMware, we were kind of discussing all these issues and what we were seeing, you know, with customers and how we could kind of approach and solve it. Uh, but then we both ended up leaving and then after, you know, I had a chance to go think about it some more, Kind of approached Ben and said, listen, if we do it this way, what do you think about that, right? And then he started kind of contributing back, well, you know, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? So that's how we kind of got into a, a, a mindset of this is a solvable problem if you just approach it from the correct angle. And right. I think that's where we uh, kind of came together on that. Right, because, because it is very different, right? If you're building a native application versus now people want to get some of those cloud native benefits with the legacy stuff, either a rewrite or a lift and shift. And, and so there's, you know, the, the momentum is there. Obviously cloud is giant. We just got back from, 
from uh, Google Next and, and IBM Interconnect and AWS shows. So, you know, the clouds there, enterprises are all in, but there is now, you know, the legacy stuff where people want to get that stuff into the benefits of cloud architecture, and that's what you're helping them with. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's, there's going to be a mix. There's obviously going to be a long tail of legacy monolithic enterprise applications that are going to continue to run for the next 10, 20, 30 years right. on-prem. And at the same time, a lot of those applications are being, getting re-architected, broken down into microservices, built cloud native, or sometimes built on-prem um, because of the timeliness and the availability of resources and corporate requirements. But then you also want to be able to go back and forth to get, get advantages of the cloud and the on-demand nature of cloud that you don't necessarily get when you have an on-prem application. Right, right. Um, but it's, it's early days. I think you're going to see a lot of uh, improvements, not just in the approach to move the applications to the cloud, but also how to manage it once you get it there, how to do day two operations, and a lot of things that Mazda and the team have built into the app, uh, the Appalachian environment is the ability to do load balancing, to do failover, to do just have an inventory of your entire application stack so the IT organization can also have um, more control over how they're running and how they're behaving after they've been installed. Right, so that's interesting. Of all the times we've been to DockerCon, which are numerous, I've never heard the expression day two operations. You know, there's a lot of talk about spinning stuff up and how quickly you can spin stuff up, but you know, it's that, that pesky day, still the, day, day one. two, They're right? Still on day one. <laughs> right, right. But, but then you gotta run the stuff, right? Yep. Which is not the exciting stuff necessarily. It's not the, the sexy part. It's not the bringing these things to life. It's the day to day, you know, grind, if you will. Yeah, and I think, so, and that's some of what you get from Mazda and myself is our experience and many years of working with enterprise IT environments that do have, it's not sexy, but they do have to worry about security and compliance and archival and management and failover and load balancing, all of those things are key parts of capabilities that we need to automate in the new world of the cloud native applications and that we're not there yet. Right, and especially in the enterprise requirements and compliance and you know, we were at RSA and you know, the security's got to be baked in everywhere and you know, traditionally, not so much anymore, but the traditional cloud you know, entry was you know, test dev, test dev, you know, test dev or cloud native, you didn't have these. Yeah, these, we, these issues. Yeah, uh, I mean, even back when we were at VMware, we were seeing small startups come in and we were looking at acquisition or partnership. Uh, frankly, a lot of what we saw were toys. People hadn't quite grasped the whole concept of what it means to create cloud native applications and containerized environments and operating environments and management of those applications. One of the reasons that I liked uh, Mazda's approach was that it's an API driven uh, mentality, which is really resonates with the developers, and it has a simplified UI on top. Right. A lot of the applications and com startups you see out there today are toy UI environments. They work fine for four or five apps, but you really can't use them in an enterprise that has thousands of applications. So having the capabilities of both the API driven model, as well as a simple UI that AppLariat or their partners can go in and help an enterprise build those large catalog of applications. I think the two really resonated with me as something that's mature and will help. Right, and and was the the market clamoring for this? You know, or is it more of a band aid to a fix that people were were having an issue with, or was it more of a kind of a vaccine? Uh, that you're kind of looking down the road a little bit further and trying to help them out. Well, so think about it. So containerization, right, is something that everybody's looking into, right. right? Every enterprise you go to, there's some kind of a science experiment already going on, right? Because we, they got to jump on the bandwagon, right? Whether it's happening from the developer side, whether it's happening from the IT side, so they're already there, right? But like Ben said, nobody's really thinking about the day two operations forward, okay? And so how do you, so let's just say you do have your environment containerized, and let's just say you're now about to deploy it into production. Great, after the party, what happens, <laughs> right? Uh, you got to manage this thing on an ongoing basis. Right. How do you roll changes into the code, into it, right? How do you scale it up? How do you scale it down? Those things are not trivial, right? So having a policy-based mechanism of managing those environments on a day two forward is really critical to get the whole solution working properly. It's not just about getting your things, getting your applications containerized, it's about ongoing basis. How do you manage and maintain it 
so that it's still useful to you from an IT perspective, not just from a developer perspective. Right, right. Because that's part of the whole the whole promise of the containers, right, is that you can bring these apps up and down and, and scale them big, small, depending on what the uh, the requirements are and how they change. But again, day two, I'm going to steal that line, the day two operation, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good one. So, so I look, think if I can just add a little bit to that, uh, absolutely. what Mazda is trying to explain is, back with the old traditional enterprise applications, you had a thick operating system, let's say Red Hat or Windows. Uh, and on top of that, you had a fairly thick and monolithic stack um, that may have had a database, let's say an Oracle database. Right, right. But there were relatively few knobs that an IT organization had to play with. As long as you knew you had Red Hat 7 with these five patches and Oracle or uh, SQL with these 12 patches, you were okay. You could mm, pretty much support any application that had been tested with that. What containers have done and what the cloud native service oriented architecture has done is they've completely blown that up. Right. The OS is now a very thin layer, whether it's core OS or one of these container environments. And then on top of that, each application stack really declares its dependencies on other services and other libraries. What that means to the IT organization, and this is the day two issue that they haven't really grappled with yet, is you can't just have two or three knobs of a Red Hat and Oracle. You now have 27 knobs for each of those applications and services you're trying to run, and it becomes really difficult to keep track of it, both for security purposes. You know, if, if I've got 10 apps running, each of them could pull in 20 different libraries, each with some security vulnerabilities. How is an IT organization going to deal with that? Right. Those are the types of things that I think this environment really helps um, in terms of having a single inventory of your software stack and your application stack right, so right. you can quickly go in and say, I know what version is running, I know what the security vulnerabilities are, what updates I need to do, and it brings sanity to that environment. Because that's a, that's the dirty little secret then of the API kind of based application because the other thing I th where I thought you were going is where before it was that infrastructure that determined the apps that you could build. Now really it's driven by the application on top and then what microservices and infrastructure does it need. And then of course there's this thing called portability. You know, as you move things from test dev to production, maybe you want to put part of it in a cloud, you don't want it in a cloud, it's on-prem based on data sovereignty issues and those types of things. So it's a much more complex Absolutely. environment with just, like you said, a lot more knobs. I like that analogy, you know, 27 knobs, just not just three. Right. Every time you introduce a new abstraction layer, somebody gets helped, somebody gets hurt. Right, right, right. right. Um, in this case, it's much easier for the developers to be able to develop the unit that they're working on, develop a reusable unit, be able to test it, and then move it along, right? Right, right. When it gets thrown over to the wall on the IT side, all those, every one of those little units becomes an independent variable that has to be managed by somebody on the other side. Right. So that's where the complexity is. That's why you can't really do it the way you traditionally did it. You have to do it via a policy-driven mechanism. Right, because the developers don't want to deal with it. Right. right? And that, that's the whole promise too, right? They don't have to deal with the infrastructure so much, but like you said, it's the day two, they actually have to operate it. Yeah. Excellent, so as you look forward, any particular um, you know, kind of opportunities in terms of verticals or application type that you see as kind of low-hanging fruit where you want to go first or where there's the kind of biggest ROI for your customer? Sure, so I mean, it's interesting that we've seen it across verticals, right? These are custom apps, right? That enterprises use to essentially deliver business, right? And so we haven't really come across one vertical that says, oh, this one is really aching for this problem, right? The problem is you're not able to compete with your smaller competitors. Right, right. That goes right across verticals, right? So how do you bring these capabilities um, you know, into your environment? So. Um, we really haven't come across, maybe you haven't been out there long enough to find a particular vertical, but right now we're seeing it cuts across verticals because it's a business problem that cuts across the verticals. All right, All right so Ben, I'll give you the last word. Um, your next advisory meeting, board meeting, whenever you guys get together, coffee, Friday beverage, what, uh, what's kind of top of mind awareness of, of a really critical things that, that, that App Larry's got to make sure we're taking care of? I think um, to harp on the same uh, comment, I'll say day two stuff. And these guys have seen that every time they come to me, they've built a really smooth on-ramp for taking the applications and to the cloud. But I keep harping on this, what about day two? Have you thought about providing a central inventory? Have you thought about easy search if I have a thousand applications that I'm trying to manage? Have you thought about 
uh, security implications of, you know, what if I can quickly find all the versions of this crypto library 5.6 so I can apply a patch to them. Those types of day two operational IT um, additions and improvements, especially at scale when you're dealing with lots and lots of applications, I think are what's going to turn this from a toy application to a real enterprise ready application that an enterprise can work with. So that plus working with partners. Because of the API-driven nature of this, I think it's really important to build that team of partners who understand it, are experts, and can go in and help the enterprises who don't want to do it themselves. You just like the buzzkill. Everyone's all happy, like you said, the, they have the party, they go live, everyone's <laughs> drinking champagne, and then you're waiting around for the sun to come up the next day. Here we are, guys, here we go back to work, right? All right, well, that's exciting, right? Big problems are big opportunities, and yep. uh, and thanks for stopping by and uh, taking a few minutes, and, and, and best of luck. We look forward to watching the story Thank unfold. You. All right, Ben and Mazda, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back.